Welcome to Let's Football Live, the podcast featuring candid conversations and inside stories from players, coaches, experts, and pretty much anyone associated with the Hero Indian Super League. On this all Jamshedpur episode, we have the club's new signing, Jordan Murray. It's the second touch, and it's mayhem from Murray. The rock solid leader at the back, Peter Hartley. But in this stand up ball, is inviting somebody to just go and hit the ball over the line, exactly what Peter Hartley does. My word, he's a man mountain of a captain, this lad. And, and the gaffer himself, one of the most experienced managers in the Hero ISL, Owen Coyle. And Owen Coyle looks away. First half, jump check put three, Bengaluru, nothing. Thank you, gentlemen. My name is Suyash, and once again, welcome to this very unique Twitter space, Jordan Peter, and especially the Gaffer. I call it unique because we've actually not had a first team manager in our series of Twitter spaces so far. Um, so to start well, off, ho- ho- hopefully the rest of the boys have come on then now because we all love the game, and if we could promote what you're doing, it's a fantastic show. <laughs> and if we could keep promoting football and the ISL then and Indian football, then that's great for everybody. Absolutely, Owen, sir. I must admit, in the build up to this interaction, I have been thinking about how I must be on my best behavior around you. I really don't want to step out of line, so I want to be sure about one thing before we proceed. Do I have your permission to call you Gaffer? Yeah, listen, yeah, I've been called a lot worse. So yeah, you can you can yeah, absolutely no problem. You can call in regards best behavior, you know I'll be bumping into you during the season anyway, so you know it'd be your best behavior. <laughs> yep. I, I know better than better than not not to be on my best behavior. So it would be good. Is that everyone um, is that what you call by everyone in the Jamshed for FC camp as well, from the players to the support staff? Yeah, so some obviously some of the players will call you your know, coach or, or gaffer. You know, the bottom line is we we all have an understanding. We know how hard we're there to work, and uh, and we've get I've got a great staff, a great bunch of players. It's yeah. it's a fantastic club, Jim Chedpur. Very honoured to see you. You you love it when um, all of these nice different influences of all the different football cultures come into the Hero ISL. Uh, speaking of which, of course, we do have the also very British Peter Hartley here with us. So, welcome to Let's Football Live, Peter. Have you had a good day so far? Yes, good day. Very hard day today. Um, we've earned a day off with the uh, with the manager tomorrow. Thankfully, <laughs> the gaffers give us a day off tomorrow because we've had quite a tough day today. Not bad at all. Uh, how's preseason been, especially with Jordan? And there's a specific reason why I ask you that question, but I'll come to why later. It's been good. It's been good. Um, obviously. He's, he was fantastic last season for Kerala, mm-hmm. and uh, he's he hopefully he'll go from strength to strength with those guys this season. But uh, it's been it's been a tough preseason so far, and uh, we're just looking forward to going into our our preseason friendlies uh, soon. Gaffer, is there a lot of running happening that uh, you're making the players do during preseason? Well, our training is all is always based on on high intensity. And the players are working very hard on that front. So you always have to get the balance between being obviously physically and mentally in a very good place. But we have a good group of players. Uh, the skipper there and Jordan epitomise, you know, the the you know, the type of spirit and the drive that these players have, the hunger to do well. Uh, you know, Vals to the quality, Lima, Eli Sabia, Greg Stewart. And then obviously our you know, our domestic players are a great bunch of boys working so hard, looking to improve all the time. And uh, it's you know, it's really enjoyable and very, very humbling to work with them. That's so nice to hear. Uh, now Jordan, I'm gonna come to you next. I'm just gonna gently nudge you in a direction and then let you do the talking after that. Uh one date, January 10th, 2021, Jamshedpur FC versus Kerala Blasters FC. 3-2, Jordan Murray versus Peter Hartley. Talk to me about that. Yeah, it was, um, you know, obviously, when I was at Kerala, um, the game against Jamshedpur was always um, was always going to be difficult. Um, if you, if you, anyone who watched that game, it was sort of really end to end, to end with, obviously, uh, Neca Vasquez scoring as well. So, um, yeah, it was always going to be a tough, a tough game. Um, no, but obviously getting used to getting used to Pete, it was um, it was obviously a very tough battle. But you know, in, in the big scheme of things, it was um, it worked out for me. But you know, you know, fingers crossed that it uh, it doesn't work out for anyone else this season. 
And and what about your individual battle with Peter Hartley in that game, Jordan? Yeah, it was um, yeah, it was quite difficult. You can obviously see by Peter's uh, physique, he's quite strong. He's very smart as well, um, and he's very cheeky. He likes to put in a little uh, a knee or two into your into your body and try and get you early, so you're you know, you're hobbling around for the majority of the game. But um, no, again, I, I take it in a way that I I can learn and I can you know have that experience of having a tough defender that I can sort of learn off um, and yeah I was lucky enough to score a couple goals in that game um, but um, I'm sure like I said I'm sure it's going to be difficult for anyone to get past our defence this season and you brought out the old snake celebration as well in that game uh, Peter yeah. do you remember leaving something on Jordan in the last game that will be probably the easiest game he had all season in the ISL because <laughs> I was 60% fit. You can obviously tell that the excuses are coming out that. <laughs> but but Peter, you come up against Jordan every day in training now. Um, so how's he like in training? How how are you coping with uh, with the skills that he possesses? You know the beauty we have um, at Jamshapur now is we've got two of the best strikers in the league. So as a defender, if you're playing against the best in the league every single day, it's only going to make you better and ready for what's coming. So um, it's a joy to play against the likes of Naka and uh, obviously Pandita and Jordan um, every single day. And then hopefully when we come into the season, we'll be ready to to play against the other strikers in the league. Right. And would I be right in assuming when you say two of the best strikers in the league, the other one you're referring to is Paz uh, Valskis? Yeah, Naka obviously is golden boot two seasons ago and he was fantastic for us last season. So. And you've seen what Jordan done at Kerala. Obviously, Jordan's young as well. He's got a, a very, very big and bright future ahead of him. So, we've got two, without a doubt, two of the best strikers in the league. Right. Now, I wanted to come to you, Gaffer. Kerala Blasters versus Jamshedpur FC, 3-2 last season. It was a close game. But how, how much did that match in particular have a bearing on you wanting to sign Jordan ahead of the 2021-22 season? What did you observe about his game from the sidelines? Yeah, well, listen, the one thing that's very noticeable about Jordan is how much of a hard working player he is, how much of a team player he is, and, and obviously it was evident in that game, but more than that, I mean, every, I watched every game in the league last year, and every time I seen Jordan, I was getting more impressed by the game. So of course that, you know, playing against you, you know, that certainly adds to everything I've seen, but it wasn't based on that, on that game, it was based on the whole package. And the thing, the great thing about Jordan is, and not, you know, he's sitting listening of course, but I tell him to his face anyway. Jordan has the scope and the potential to improve greatly. He really has a, an opportunity to, to have a wonderful career and obviously do very well at Jamshedpur. Now, we will help and, and impart our knowledge, wisdom, experience, whatever you want to call it. But the most important thing in this is Jordan, what Jordan applies every day at training, taking it into matches. And if he does that, then I'm telling you, he's set for a very, very good career. Jordan, how does it feel to hear that from the gaffer himself? Yeah, of course. It's um, you know, it's a, it's a great feeling to have someone who um, who thinks of you like that. You know, for me, it's it's about exactly what he said. It's about learning every day and gathering information that I can take and you know pursue my career into into bigger and better things. But you know, this is a time for me to to learn, to listen, um, you know, to pay attention and to take it all on board and, and on game day to execute. Um, and so, like I said, so far with training, it's been exactly that. It's it, uh, it's great to have not only the coach with experience, you've got Sandy as well, the assistant coach, and then you've got you know players like Peter, Mecca, Ellie, Alex Lima, Greg, who are who, who also have played the game as well. So for me, uh, I've said in a lot of interviews, it's a, it's a really good opportunity for me to to learn as much as I can and, and take it all on board because you know I'm, I'm lucky enough to be a professional footballer as my career, and I just want to do the best I can for not only myself but for the team. Right. Uh, we also have your teammates Farooq Chaudhry and Elit Sabia listening in to this Twitter space. So shout out to them. Farooq, wish you a speedy recovery from your injury, and I'm sure everyone at Jamshed would hope to see you back fit and fired on the pitch soon and uh, I'll just throw it back to you uh, Gaffer now the Sorry, so yes, so yes, can I just come in there just just on obviously you mentioned about Far- Farouk and, and, and Ellie lifting in and hope others are as well but particularly for Farouk obviously the injury that he's picked up playing for the national team then first and foremost our thoughts, our thoughts are with Farouk 
and, and his recovery and obviously it's a blow for the boy for Farouk it's a blow for Jim Shedpour and the national team but India wouldn't have went on to win that championship if it wasn't for Farouk knocking that ball back for Sunil so late in the game to score the winner had India not won they'd been out of the competition so I think the, the country owe Farouk and Sunil a great deal of debt for that for what they've done and we know Farouk is going to be an outstanding player I brought him back in January it was terrific for me I was excited this year because he would have went on to add even more goals to his game. So we all, from everybody at Jump Shed, will wish for a speedy recovery. He'll come back bigger and stronger because out with his quality, he's a footballer. He's an outstanding lad. He's an outstanding human being. And uh, we look forward to see him back in the jump shed for colours. I'm sure everyone on this Twitter space also thinks the same way. Farooq, wish you a speedy recovery uh, from the gaffer himself and from everyone at Jim Shed for FC. And gaffer, coming back to you, I wanted to ask you the same about Peter. Now, what prompted you to sign him last season from Motherwell? Well, Peter's a player I've known for many, many years. He actually played played against me when I was Burnley manager. And, uh, and and I knew the end. You know, when you're, you're playing games, you're really focusing on your own team. But sometimes somebody will catch your eye because of the influence they have in the opposition. You mentioned earlier about Jordan last year in the Kennel game. Well, every time I seen Peter playing, he always caught my eye. I knew the Scottish scene. I knew the people at Motherwell. He'd been the captain there. He'd been an outstanding player, a leader, brought so many qualities. And you know, I I did everything in my power to to get him last year because I knew the impact that it could have. And there was no coincidence that Jim Shedpour had their, their highest ever uh, number number of shutouts last year. And Peter played a huge part in that, as he will, as he will again this year. So it's great to have talented footballers, but it's really important that you have really good people as well at your club. Because our strength is not, you know, we have very talented individuals, but that's not our strength. Our strength will be as a group, as it was last year. You know, there was a lot made about a lot of very good teams last year, you know, and we very narrowly, you know, we didn't get a credit for it, very narrowly missed out in those playoffs last year. And that was, with all due respect, I inherited a lot of the players. Now this year, we've looked to add our own flavour where we could, accepting that we, you know, we were not the biggest spenders in the league, but what we have done, we brought quality in. And Peter Hartley coming in last year, you know, he... He's everything I am. He's quality. He's honest. He's hard working, and and he wears his heart in his sleeve. Well, that's that's music to the ears of the Jamshedpur FC supporters. Uh, yeah, for we have Farooq joining us over here as well. So Farooq, we can hear from you firsthand how your recovery from the injury is coming along. First of all, commiserations on the injury, but how are you recovering so far? Hello, everyone. Hello, Gaffer. I hope you're doing good. And hi, Jordan and Peter. First of all, I would like to say thank you so much, Gaffer, for all the kind words you spoke about me. I really miss everyone. I wish I could be back directly from the national team to the club, but unfortunately, I've picked up an injury. Yeah, I'm doing good right now, focusing on my recovery, and let's see how it goes. And I'm really excited to watch all our games because the way I see the training videos and I know all of the players. I'm really excited that uh, we are going to do amazing in, in this season and I'm really looking forward to our games and I want to wish all the very best to everyone. If if I cannot cheer you guys, uh, I mean in Goa, I would be cheering for you all from my house and I'll make sure that I give my everything while supporting you guys. Yes, that's it. All the best, guys. Thanks, Henry. That's so kind. Just get healthy. Make sure you and your family listen football as we love football. But families, obviously, that's the first thing that comes first for it. So, say, get yourself healthy, son. We look forward to welcoming you back with open arms. You know, yeah. I was so excited because, you know, for me, I, I could see you scoring between five, ten goals, maybe more this year because that's the only thing you're, you're looking to add to your play because you have the intelligence. You have so much football intelligence. You have pace. You have... So many qualities for it. So get well soon, son, and I look forward to welcoming you back. Thank you, thank you so much, Gaffer. Uh, talking about the goals, I have passed on the responsibility to uh, responsibility to Jordan and uh, Nerka. I hope they contribute my part. You know, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I'm really good. looking forward to it. <laughs> Cracking, cracking little player, Farooq Chaudhry. Thanks for those words, Gaffer. I'm sure it's uh, 
come as 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 great encouragement to Farooq over here. I want to come to you again, Gaffer. You were leading Chennai in FC before joining Jamshedpur FC last season. So you've experienced the league and cultural differences in football in both the COVID-affected bio bubble season and a non-COVID season. Which is why uh, I'll throw it back to Jordan and Peter first on this. You both haven't been a part of the ISL where it's possible to travel within the country to away games, have a stadium that you can call home in the true sense of the word. So how much can you afford to think about this realistically? Because there's still a job at hand, right? Yeah, definitely. Disappointing that we can't be with the with our fans um, for this, you know, uh, especially last season and obviously this season coming in. But um, you know, we've we've got a job to do. Even though we're away from home for for us foreigners as well, we've got a job to do. So hopefully, again, this season we can turn it on and, and win. I think that's the biggest thing for for the club. Obviously, they haven't made the playoffs yet, so that's a, definitely a target for us. But it's to win every game. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Uh, the gaffers definitely put it out there that win at all costs, um, and that's what we should we should be aiming for anyway. So yeah, it's 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 difficult the fact that we can't be with the Jemshed poor fans. Um, so I'd love to be there and obviously experience uh, experience it from there. But um, you know, again, we have a job to do, and and hopefully we can get it done this season for not only us but for them as well. Yeah, absolutely. Gaffer, I'll come back to you now. Your second season with Jemshed poor FC is going to start. Uh, nine clean sheets last season, and you finished sixth, just four points off from the playoff positions. So how does the team plan to build on from last? season's performance and in, in what ways do you feel the team is stronger? Yeah, that is a brilliant question and, and obviously that's why I enjoy doing this when you're speaking to yourself with football knowledge and everything else. Yeah, I think what, we, what we're looking to add is, is that little bit of creativity in the final third. That we had a lot of good qualities last year but if you know we're looking just for that spark, I think in the signing of, as I've said, we've bolstered the, the offensive areas, as you mentioned, with obviously Jordan coming out to, to join the aircraft with Ishan Pandita, one of the, you know, such an exciting Indian talent. And obviously with Greg Stewart coming in with that, can play that number 10 role, can play anywhere across the front. So we'll certainly look to, to add that creativity, young Komal. So, and I love, the, I love the young players coming in, as young Boris did as well. So we've got pace, we've got quality, and we're looking to, obviously, Still, you'll have those shutouts, make sure we're difficult to, uh, to score against, but equally, look to have that cutting edge at the top end of the park and give, you know, Valskis and Jordan and Ishan, you know, give them supply because these boys can score goals. But I, I felt last year that we, we probably never gave them enough, you know, in terms of uh, opportunities to score even more goals. And that's what we want to do. We want to make sure, as, as everybody in the league will do. I think this year, I've got to say, I think I look at the signings a lot of clubs have made. I think it's going to be such an exciting season. The ISL is improving every year. Certainly, in my, this will be my third season. Every year it gets better. Outstanding coaches with great players. And, and going back earlier to your point, without me going on a tangent, there's no doubt, you know, that the, the fans, you know, the sooner we can get the fans back to the stadiums. I mean, my experience of the fans being in the stadiums was sensational. And this is somebody that's, you know, had three years in English Premier League and worked in America and Scotland with vociferous fans. But the fans in India, they love their clubs, they're passionate. You know, I remember my, my first game at Chennai and there was 8,000 at the game. In our last game, because obviously what we did, there was over 20,000 at the game when we when we beat Goa 4-1 in the semi-final playoff. Because the fans love to follow winning teams, they love to see good football. You look at Kerala, when Kerala are going well, I mean, that stadium is absolutely rocking. The fans, they, they love the football. And, and like most of everybody else, they want winning teams. My first experience was was at Jim Shedpool. That was my first game. Uh, the stadium was sold out. The Jim Shedford fans, they were vocal. They were colourful, supporting their team. It was an unbelievable atmosphere. And I, I thought after the game, wow, I'm really going to enjoy this experience. And I have. But obviously with COVID and the, and the bio bubbles in, it's kind of it's taken away the fans from the games. As soon as we can get back to having those those fans in the games, respective of, of all the clubs, because that's one thing I'm very, very respectful of. Every club have passionate supporters that love their team, and rightly so. And the sooner we can get them back in stadiums, the better for everyone. Um, talking of which, we have uh, we have Anand Tyagi also listening to us uh, on this Twitter space. So shout out to you, Anand. We've invited you to come up and speak and and join in the conversation. So if you'd like, please do so, and we will carry on as well. Now, Peter. You were dropped off for a bit, so I'll come back to you now. We were talking about the cultural differences and, and what cultural differences you would have noticed when you started playing in India. Now, you'd spent your entire career in British football before joining Jamshedpur FC last season. Uh, Jordan, in your case, it was with the Central Coast Mariners in the A-League. Now, so what were the cultural differences specific to football that you both noticed when you first arrived here? And do you feel you've adapted to those by now? Peter, if, if you want to go first. 
Um, yeah, it was certainly the the weather was a big a big difference for me. Um, having played in Scotland for the previous three seasons, and then and then coming to India, you know, the the humidity was a was a massive factor. It took me maybe two or three weeks to get used to it. But you know, after that, I've definitely adapted this season. I feel like I've I've got stronger very quickly compared to last year. You know, it does take time, but yeah, we, we feel good. We feel good as a team, and uh, you know, moving forward, I think we'll just keep improving like we are and hopefully get stronger and stronger and you know just try and make um, make history for this club that's that's my goal for the season is to make history uh, this is the fifth season that Jam Chapeau have been in the ISL and you know we, we've got a great opportunity as, uh, as players to really um, become legends at this football club because it, the club hasn't achieved anything yet and we've got a, we've got an opportunity to, to obviously um, give the fans something to celebrate. Yeah, I'm sure the fans would love hearing that. Jordan, what about you? Yeah, uh, I'm obviously a little bit different. Uh, Peter hasn't really experienced the heat uh, over there uh, in the United Kingdom. But, um, you know, for, for me, it was more the humidity. Heat was okay. But uh, unfortunately, last season, I come really late. So I only had one day of pre-season before our first game against ATK. So it took me a little bit longer to, to get the ball rolling a bit. But yeah, I'm lucky enough now to have a, a, a strong pre-season. Obviously, connect with the players as well a lot of new faces and obviously getting to know how how each individual plays um, so for me yeah it's a, it's a great opportunity for myself to, to you know to play with these plays and to and to I guess learn before the um, before the season kicks off um, but yeah again like what Pete said we have a great opportunity here to really to do something for this club um, you know I think we're in a really strong position to do it um, it's going to be very tough obviously a lot of the players uh, sorry a lot of the teams have made really good signings so it is going to be difficult and I think it's going to be a really good Indian Super League season so yeah we have a, a strong opportunity with the players we have and um, we're, we're just looking to win and again make history. Good to see all the players uh, from Jamshedpur FC so motivated and on the same page. Uh, guys, we just have an update from our friend Anand Tyagi who is incidentally on cricket duties with the India vs Australia warm-up game happening right now so Anand, we've made a note of that we'll try and get you on sometime else uh, for sure and I'm sure it'll be a good conversation back when, whenever that happens as well. So now, again, Gaffer. There's a lot of varying opinions on what Indian players need to do both technically and tactically to improve and of course playing with experienced foreign coaches and players helps. But in, in all your time in the ISL so far as someone who's been there and done that in Europe as well as in India, what are the good qualities that Indian players possess? And in your opinion, what do you think are some of the areas they can improve on? Yeah, well, first and foremost, I, I think the Indian players have, have many, many, many qualities. I, I think what we do need to do, it's like it's like most things. The more you work, the harder you work, then, then the better you become. So I do think that as a league, we, and obviously it's coming now to, to fulfil the AFC criteria, but we need to have longer seasons. We need to play more games. We need to have more training sessions because the players are very hardworking. They have ability. They're, they're all, you know, certainly fit. There's lots of pace in the league. And, uh, you know, what we do, what we have to add to that as, as you mentioned, a little bit of technical, you know, it's like a, a football intelligence. Obviously, back home in the, in the UK, uh, then, you know, our kids are, you know, grassroots level. The size of the country in India, you know, it's difficult, obviously, to get that level of coaching at such an early age because finance plays a huge part. So I'm hoping that, you know, as the years go, you know, the big stakeholders, the wealthy people in the country can put that money into the infrastructure to get the kids at an early age. Because the other thing as well, there must be unbelievable potential in the size of the country and little villages that people don't don't go to. That, that There must be kids with ability there. The sooner we get them, then it gives... Because ultimately, surely, we want the, the national team to reach those... You, know, you talk about the Asian Championships. Let's get to... Why can't India in time... I'm not talking about the next two or three years, but why thereafter? Why can't they get to a World Cup? Because there is potential in the country. What we need to do is get to the grassroots, get good coaching through Indian coaching and everything else. You know, because there's good Indian. I have, you know, I work with uh, Sabir at Chennai. I have No here, uh, Adrian. Terrific Indian coaches. People that know the game. What they need is opportunity. You know, Kelly did that last week, uh, last year at, in Northeast and shown that as play, people have before. So I think if we can help with the coaches as well, then it gives those players the opportunity at an early age to grow, develop, so that they're ready 
because they do, you know, they, they have they have a great work ethic, they have ability, they certainly have pace and power. We just need to add a little bit of what I would call football intelligence at, at different times, uh, know-how game management, all the little things. When you add the little things, then it gives you a far more complete player. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your views on that, Gaffer. Now, I'm sure all the Indian players, especially playing under you at Jamshedpur FC, as far as that's concerned, would be picking up on every little thing that you'd be telling them and soaking it in like sponges. Uh, Jordan, what about you? Who are some of the Indian players who have impressed you so far uh, in your two seasons of playing both with and against them? Yeah, I think um, obviously Farouk was a was a is a big blow. Um, uh-huh. I think uh, last year he was definitely definitely a standout player, and obviously you can see his talent straight away in the Indian national team. So for us, it's a big, really big blow, and I wish I wish him a really speedy recovery. But to be honest, I, I agree 100 percent with the gaffer. I think the only thing that's missing really in in this league is is grassroots football and someone to invest a lot of money into into the growth of the game. Australia's sort of in a similar boat as well. They've got a lot a lot of sports where in the UK there's football is the main sport. So, you know, on on behalf of Australia too, it's it's, it's in a similar boat. So yeah, I think the only thing that really this country needs is is to really focus on the grassroots and, and, and development and to get these and to get good coaches in that who know the game, who can understand it and, and teach these young kids from a from an early age to sort of um, you know to, to progress in, in the game, but yeah, I think I think there's a lot of lot of talent in this Indian Super League who you know players who can go on to, to bigger and better things, um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing the young Jamshed Poor players, uh, Indian players, to grow and again learn from the the foreign players as much as they can, and, and the Gaffer and Zandi as well. Yep, and on learning from foreign players, we'll we'll go back to to Peter. For doing that, uh, Peter, I, I just wanted to, of course, highlight how good of a season you had last time around playing for Jamshedpur FC. Of course, you were a rock at the back, uh, led the team from the front. But you also did that for Motherwell before joining. Now, you led Motherwell to Europa League qualification before joining the ISL. Uh, now, for all intents and purposes, had you stayed on at Motherwell, you could have potentially played in the Europa League as well. Uh, so, what was your decision-making process behind, say, coming to the ISL and working with Owen Coyle and, and joining Jamshedpur FC? Well, to be honest, obviously, having such a fantastic season at Motherwell, and it's a club, by the way, with amazing people behind the scenes. Um, and sometimes, you know, when uh, well, when you see a club like that getting hit with with the coronavirus like it did, you've you've got to think about the people at the club as well, and decisions have to be made, you know. And obviously, having spoken to the manager Stephen Robinson, uh, it was yeah, it was made aware that obviously the financially the club was struggling budget wise. So, you know, I, I I left on good terms with the club. I made the decision to leave and, and not accept the contract offer. And then, obviously, it, to be honest, it was probably one of the best decisions I ever made because extremely grateful to the manager for giving me the opportunity to come to India. And I feel like it just gave me a, a new lease of life and a real boost, experience a new culture, playing with different players, seeing a different lifestyle. You know, I, I'd never really experienced this in football. And that's why the manager always says football is the winner because it gives you the opportunity to see the world. And it's something I never really thought about until I get got to me into me 30s and and obviously getting this opportunity um you know i've i definitely wanted to take it with both hands and i feel like i definitely put myself in put myself in the right direction last season with my performances and, and my goal and target is to improve on them this year you know i don't i don't want to stand still i want to keep moving forward i want to still improve i don't i don't believe well i do believe that you're always old enough um, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can always keep improving and, and getting better as a person and as a player. So my goal and target this season is to just improve as a person, improve as a player and, and hopefully bring success to, to this football club. And wish you well in your pursuit of that, Peter. Uh, so now let's just have some fun. We've, we've gone over the serious stuff. We're just going to move on to take a few fan questions now. And we've received a fair few. Uh, so the first one is from Instagram from a user called VN underscore Xacian. They come up with innovative names these days. Question for Jordan Murray. Jordan, who teaches you Hindi songs and how do you go about learning them? Yeah, Peter. Peter actually teaches <laughs> the Hindi Good songs. Hey, there's a lot of people you've got to blame for that, but it's not me. <laughs> no, obviously, for, for me, I obviously doing two weeks quarantine last year I sort of took it on board to sort of learn a bit of bit of Hindi I thought it was a good way to sort of make friends straight away and to ease myself into the team pretty quickly so yeah I, I learned a little bit of Hindi um, and obviously there's a couple of songs and you got obviously the Bollywood films and stuff where, uh, when you got free time to sort of watch so 
no, it was for me. I picked it up quite quick. And yeah, it was a little bit of fun. And yeah, I've got someone who I've got to speak to about that video being posted. So yeah, they're, 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 they're not in my good books. Um, but yeah, it was obviously a, a thing that I picked up and obviously learnt from different um, players last season and this season as well. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Gaffer, how much Hindi have you picked up so far in your time in India? Uh, well, not certainly not as much as Jordan, that's for sure. And and the good thing is he can hold a tune, so we'll be having a concert soon, so he'll be the he'll be top of the bill for the players show. So uh you no, know, there's there's obviously little phrases and different stuff. So uh but in the main the important thing, you know, football's universal, it's global. So in terms of communication, you know, regardless of you know, the language, you know, you still get your point across and uh you know, we have, obviously, as I say, that's why it's really important that, you know, we have the Indian assistant coaches. Noel has been great for me, as, as Sabir was at, at Shania. And if there's anything that the players are unclear of, then we make a point of making sure that everybody knows their job, they know their role. But I think it's brilliant. I mean, I, I know Jordan's laughing about that. I thought the video was brilliant. I think it shows how much he, he cares, how much he wants to know about the, the culture and the country. And, and that's a lovely thing to do. To which I would say, Gaffer, very good. <laughs> now, uh, Saikat Sengupta asks on Twitter, Is Jamshedpur FC looking forward to play a different and aggressive brand of football since there are a lot of rivals in offence in the squad? So, I'll let you have that one, Gaffer. Yeah, I, I think you know, you, we, we mentioned it earlier when we were chatting about it, that how as a team, how, how do we improve from uh, narrowly missing out last year? And I've got to say this while I'm on, because I don't think we were given the credit for, for what we did last year and how we played. The season before, Jamshedpur had taken five points from their last ten games. They had the worst, they had the worst form in the last second half of, of the season prior to that. So the improvement we had was remarkable last year, given the injuries and the problems we had. Some of the decisions, I mean, the decision against FC Goa, in its own that game in its own, when we scored the winning goal, Alex Lima in the 89th minute, or it would have been, that would have actually seen us in the playoffs and the FC Goa not in the playoffs on that game alone. So. It's done now, it's finished, but we improved enormously last year. But to improve further again, you're right. I'm glad they asked the question. We need to improve in the offensive third. And that's why we've signed the players that we have to look to add so that we still have the balance. We still obviously want to be nice and tight with, with, with the skipper and Ellie's coming in there and Marshall and the boys at the back. You know, young Din Leanna was outstanding for me. Renesh had a wonderful season. Ricky did well. And we have competition with Anas coming in and, and young Din Pua. So we certainly look to have competition, but be solid at the back and look to have that creative threat. Now, there's going to be some wonderful teams in the league, but we showed last year, you know, on, on our own when we're at our very best. We beat Mumbai, we beat ATK, but we have to be a little bit more consistent and you have that attack, that, that aggressive attacking uh, threat that we have because I have players that can score goals. You can never, you can never have enough goal scorers in your football club, and we have them. What we have to do is make sure we give them the supply, because if you give them the supply, those boys can score. You know, Jordan Murray and their Kavalskis, Golden Boot winner, uh, young Ethan Pandita, you know, young Boris popped up to score last year. We have goal scorers in our team. We have to make sure we give them enough service so that they can finish and that's what we'll look to do. It'll be tough, but every game's tough in the ISL, but we're looking forward to the challenge. That's quite a comprehensive uh, answer, Saikat. I hope you're happy with uh, with the answer that the Gaffer has given you on this one. And Gaffer, we all saw the video uh, of you uh, going through the drills with Ishan Pandita, the penalty drill and, and how you were just egging him on and, and pushing him with every kick that he took. Uh, so, just a small word on Pandita. I know you've, of course, mentioned him a couple of times, but what do you think he brings to Jamshedpur FC's attack? Yeah, I, I've got to say, I, I, you know, I loved when I seen him last year. I was aware of him of the history that he'd been to Spain as a young player. And there's no doubt he learned a lo- an awful lot in his time in Spain and it served him well. But when I see him, I see an exception. This, you know, he's a natural, he's a natural finisher, like Jordan, like Nerka. Uh, but he'll be the first to tell you, and I've spoke to him about it, I want to improve his all-round game. You know, there's more to being a striker than just obviously, uh, ultimately people are always judged on goals. But sometimes you can, str- strikers that can contribute to games, like Jordan Murray, for example, he can contribute to a game without scoring a goal because of the work that he does for the team. Ner Kavalskis is the same. He leads the line, he brings the ball in, he brings your team in. And there was times last year, Nerka did so well for the team. You don't always have to score. When you do, it's an added bonus. But that's something, I spoke to Ishan on this, uh, that I'll look to improve his general all-round game. Because if you do that, then... You know, you know, he mentioned last year, you know, he wanted more minutes at FC Goa. Then the way to do that is to improve, you know, the deficiencies you have, make yourself better. 
but his natural talent for scoring goals, right foot, left foot, he's very good in the air, he's a powerful lad, very humble boy as well, because every day, you know, when Jordan does this as well, they'll come and they ask, and, and I love that, because that tells me that players want to get better, and if they get better individually, then we as a team are getting better, and that's my job as a head coach, to improve the whole team, uh, so we're all together pulling in the same direction. Uh, and I'm very fortunate I've got a great group of lads that, that want to get better. Well, I, I can tell you that Ishan is, is a lucky boy to be working under you, Gaffer, with, with the kind of high praise that you reserve for him. Uh, so the next question we have is from Parvati on Twitter. And uh, this one is, uh, is again uh, for you, Gaffer. How will the team cover for Farooq Chaudhary's absence through injury? I mean, of course, you've you've brought in a lot of attacking players, but uh, Farooq missing would, of course, uh, be a bit of a blow ahead of the season. Ab- absolutely, one hundred percent. You know, for me, I-, I mentioned before, and not because he was listening. He knows. I mean, I spoke to him extensively last January to bring him back. Uh, my first season, he caught my eye. I thought, I think Farooq's a wonderful player. He's young. He's only going to get better. He has a very, very clever player, the football intelligence I spoke about. He has that and he has pace and he has so many qualities. He's hard working. Uh, so, of course, that, without doubt, that's a blow. Any team in the ISL that had a player of Farouk's quality and, and went injured, it would be a blow to them. What you have to, you have to do in football is, is, is adjust and make the best of that situation. But what it does, similar to the reduction of, of foreign players this year, it gives an opportunity for somebody to step up and say, I want that jersey. And this is the thing about football, you know, players, people always think when coaches are changing teams, coaches don't put players out of the team that are playing well. So players, if they get to the maximum, then they'll stay in the team. And it's got to be seen to be a fair fight, which it will be. So if you're playing well for me, you look at my teams last year, you stay in the team. Obviously, Farouk missing will be a blow, but it's up for somebody now to step in and, and, and take that place and show that, you know, they can play a bit as well. And we have young talented players in Boris and Komal. Len Dungo has been outstanding for me since he came in as well. We have plenty of pace uh, and hopefully, you know, those boys stepping up can, can, can ease the blow because it is a blow of, of Farouk missing, but hopefully those boys can step up and show that they want to be starters. Absolutely. Uh, now, next question for you, Peter. Prasoon Jha asks on Twitter, will you miss the pairing with Stephen Eze this season? Yeah, obviously, yeah, me and Stephen created a, a really good partnership last year and we kept eight clean sheets, which is fantastic. But listen, I played against Ellie twice last season. What an absolute beast he is at the back. So um, I do miss my my, uh, my partnership with Stephen, but I'm very, very excited to play with uh, Sabia. Because playing against him last year, he made the game look very easy. So I'm hoping we can we can learn things from each other. And, you know, as a as a parent, our obvious goal is to be a clean sheet this season. Uh, and lastly now, I will take the liberty of plugging one question in from myself as well as a fan, uh, Jordan, now. I cannot not talk to you about your Central Coast Mariners stint and uh, while while it was uh, what it was uh, in the success that you had over there. Talk to us about that Usain Bolt link up once, please. We want to know the whole story from start to finish. What was it like to play with him? And more importantly, how's his touch? Yeah, well, the touch wasn't too good. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he, he he's an out-and-out professional. He was the fastest man in the world. It was amazing. Uh, it was amazing. To have that presence to see, for instance, like uh, 30 different news outlets come to training, it was just amazing the amount of um, exposure that you had from something, someone like that coming to just to train with your club. So yeah, it was for me, it was an experience. It was my first, actually, my first ever professional contract. That I, I recently signed it and two weeks later he was coming to train. So it was, yeah, it was very overwhelming um, to have someone like that be there and obviously when you saw him run for the first time it's just jaw dropping it was crazy crazy pace um and again he was a pretty nice guy he was um but he had that arrogance as a professional which which a lot of a lot of athletes do have and it can be a really good thing and it can be a really bad thing but for, for that presence that he had that arrogance which was which, which was a good arrogance that he knew he was the best in the world so obviously having him come to training having that exposure and having the presence there of someone like that was was outstanding not only for me but also for the young boys and even the older boys to have someone like that but um you know he, he gave it a shot he gave it his best it, to be honest he wasn't a footballer um i think he knew that by the end of it but i think you know he, he learned a lot as well and he, he sort of knew by the end that he wasn't 
going to pursue that career. But you know, he, 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 I would definitely take up if I was him. I'd definitely take up the, the nine point five eight, you know, fastest man ever to live. So, you know, again, to have someone like that was was incredible. Right, and, and I can imagine how surreal it must have been for you as well as a young player coming into the team. And and the last thing on your mind would have been expecting to see Usain Bolt suddenly being signed by the club. Now, at any point of time, did the club ever think of signing him as a serious option in the squad? What was the impression that you got? Because this is the question that we all had as as a observers during the time yeah I, I i don't think the club offered him a contract um mm-hmm. i think they sort of knew where he stood for, for i think they sort of wanted that exposure and, and to have someone like that come to training um you know he, he wanted to pursue a career and they gave him the opportunity to do that yeah and again i was lucky enough to share the field with him in in his in his first ever trial game which he which he scored two goals in so it was yeah again like i can say it was it was an incredible opportunity um especially for me from a young kid playing semi-professional to have you know one one day working in the uh working in a house as an electrician and the next day you're uh, sharing a pitch with Usain Bolt you know it was it was very surreal yeah. it happened all so quick so um you know again I, I can say that to my grandkids you know when I get older you know I had that opportunity and you know for me it will always be a great experience yeah and it's not a bad thing that even in Jamshedpur you do have a fair few speedsters maybe not uh, not like you say in Bolt but uh, you know you're surrounded by good company as far as that's concerned yeah definitely yeah uh, you know again there's a great bunch of um, lads in this team you know I think for me Peter Peter Hartley probably the quickest player in the league I'm so quick um, uh, FIFA <laughs> FIFA need to change my stats I'm not I'm very happy with this 34 pace yeah, I'm sure the gas will vouch for me I'm a lot quicker than that 100% 100% <laughs> I think it's probably at least uh, at least a 60, 65 um, in my books. But um, no, again, we have some really good players in the team, um, some real quick players and a lot of smart players as well. And, you know, all I can say is, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the season. I know the players are, and, and hopefully we can put a good show on for Jem Shepo and, uh, and obviously the Hero ISL. Yep. And, and Peter, don't worry, we'll take that up with EA, uh, or you can do that at your end, but whatever works. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, listen, it's been absolutely fabulous having the four of you, Gaffer, Jordan, Peter and Farooq as well. Thank you so much for joining this Twitter space. And uh, I can tell you personally speaking, my Wednesday just got a lot better being in, in your company. No, thank you very much. We really enjoyed it. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a good season, everyone. And uh, here's hoping that you bring a lot of joy to the Shit for FC fans this season. Thank you for having us on. Yep. Thank Cheers. You thank you, Peter. Bye-bye. And thank you to everyone who listened in and tuned into this space. Uh, do watch out for our next uh, Twitter space as we build up to the Hero ISL 2021-22 season. Until next time, it's goodbye from us.